It's about electronic cigarettes. They're about to be regulated as medicines for the first time here in the UK. And this means that they'll have to meet strict safety standards and there will be tighter controls on how they're marketed. More than a million people use the battery-powered e-cigarettes, including uh, what's involved is that you inhale a mist of nicotine rather than smoke. Well, let's take you across to Karen, who's in the world's newsroom for us. She's been finding out how these e-cigs are viewed in uh, some parts of the world. It's quite amazing at the moment, though, isn't it, Karen? If you walk around the world's newsroom or outside, lots of people using them. Well, I've been discovering that, Lucy, actually. I have to admit, I hadn't really seen one up close until today, an e-cigarette in real life. But we're appropriately enough on the second floor of Broadcasting House, uh, where the BBC's health and science reporters are, uh, just to try and get a sense of, of how popular these things are. And, of course, the British authorities now are saying they would like them to be regulated because although they don't contain tar and they, they deliver nicotine by water vapour, there are still health concerns and concerns about the way they're manufactured and if they regulate them they think that they can sort of eradicate those concerns and worries and lack of quality but uh, I'm going to talk to uh, two of my BBC colleagues uh, for their experiences uh, Helen Dofers and Mark Gregori and Helen is from the BBC Africa service but she is going to talk about her experience because she's talking in her personal capacity now Helen you've got two examples here and I mean you have had a really good result with them yeah basically initially I was really against them I thought all oh, people look odd smoking these strange cigarettes and then I decided I wanted to stop smoking and um, um, at first I started with the patches and for a month there was the Christmas time and everyone was going out for parties and there was, it was quite hard to go to the pub and see all my friends having cigarettes so then I bought one of them and I realised it was great because I could still go out with my friends during, during the, the drink party in the pub and then I could also be inside and smoke, you know, the <laughs> cigarette. Everyone was looking at me strangely and now I've bought some with vanilla flavour, I've got coffee flavour <laughs> too and it's really good, it's even better than and smoking. They're sort of made of plastic, they're not soft so like yes, real so cigarettes. this part that you kind of take off, this is I the part that you buy, that. so there's cartridges and then you have another part that you buy as well but that lasts for a long time and this you can charge with a USB charger Extraordinary. You just screw it in and then charge onto your computer. <laughs> so I've got that, I have that for six months now. I don't change it. So now, it's much cheaper. The question I'm sure a lot of people will be thinking will be now are you addicted to these? Yeah, I think that's the problem because obviously they still have nicotine, so they don't have tar and chemicals. So I still think for me it's better. My health has, has improved massively. I can feel the improvement, but I understand that, yeah, I'm still addicted to nicotine, so the nicotine. and to these weird vanilla flavouring things. Now, but, a lot of know. people, thank Helen, thank you very much. I mean, we've got lots of comments. I just want to bring you one from uh, Iqbal in, in Turkey. He says, e-cigarettes aren't popular in Turkey. Most people still prefer normal cigarettes, which brings me on to my next guest, Mark, from uh, BBC Russian Service. And Mark, really, that is the experience. Unlike Helen, uh, Russian people still very much the traditional kind of smoking. Absolutely. Uh, according to official statistics, 43% of the population are smokers. And more than 60% of them are men and the rest are women. Gosh, 43%. Yes, exactly. And, and, you know, actually, the cigarettes, many of them are smoking. The quality is even worse than the um, quality of the cigarettes we know here in the West. Which means, from the point of view of health, they are uh, quite, uh, quite bad. What is the government saying? And when, when you see something like a product Helen's been describing, is the government at all enthusiastic to be the solution to Russia's smoking problem? Well, February this year, the um, parliament adopted a law, an anti-smoking law, which, um, and, and it is quite unclear in the law whether the e-cigarettes or cigarettes like that, you know, uh, imitation, uh, imitation of cigarettes, are banned in Russia or not. Right. It is written in a way that you can both interpret it like they are banned or uh, they are not. And it basically depends on what the trends are. However, I came across to a letter, an official letter from the Ministry of Public Health saying that they are not tobacco products so they should not be regulated by the law. But we know also that this stance can be changed any time. Do you have any idea why, why smoking is still so pre prevalent in Russia? 53% and 60% of those smokers male. Is it very a macho thing to do? Well, you know, w when I was a boy, when I was a teenager, <laughs> starting smoking for me was like a sign of becoming a grown-up. And I used to smoke for 23 years 
I stopped in 1998. No e-cigarettes, no patches, nothing. Wow. I just quit and that was it. So for me it was a case for uh, uh, willpower <laughs> as it is for many, many people in Russia and in the post-Soviet countries. Helen, you're nodding your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I started really young too. And in France, I think, unfortunately, it's something we do at school. It's the little sne sneaky cigarette. But then I got hooked and I decided that it was time for me to stop. And this has helped me. But I know that in France it's getting also people are getting into it. But I'm, all my friends in France, they are still smoking normal cigarettes. So I think people, there's different types of smokers. There's the hardcore ones, people who really don't believe in any kind of help. Mm. And I have to admit that I fell into the trap of the new gadget. And so far it's worked for me, but I don't know, you know about the future, we'll see. Thank you to you both, <laughs> Helen and Mark. It's good to have you with us. So just to bring you uh, the details of what other parts of the world are doing, New Zealand, e-cigarettes are regulated as medicines. They can only be purchased in pharmacies. Uh, Denmark, Canada and Australia, they are restricted in their sales, import and marketing. And interestingly enough, Lucy, complete bans in place in Brazil, Norway and Singapore. So a varied picture. That's very varied. Karen, thanks so much for joining us from the World's Newsroom.